Well, good morning and welcome to Daily Prayer. Today is Wednesday the 29th of March and I hope this finds you well. Thank you for joining me. As always, we use the form of prayer written by the Reverend David Adam in his book, The Rhythm of Life. We use one of the day's Bible readings and a reflection on that reading. And on a Wednesday, the theme of our prayers is the Holy Spirit. And so we pray. The Spirit of the Lord fills the whole world. The Spirit of the Lord moves over the deep. The Spirit of the Lord warms our hearts. The Spirit of the Lord fills all things. Come Holy Spirit, come wind of life, come Lord of heaven, come flame of love, come giver of all gifts, come and fill us. And the psalm on a Wednesday is Psalm 139, the Spirit of God is in all the world. Lord, you have searched me out and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You trace my journeys and my resting places and are acquainted with all my ways. Indeed, there's not a word on my lips, but you, O Lord, know it altogether. You press upon me behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain to it. Where can I go then from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I climb up to heaven, you are there. If I make the grave my bed, you are there also. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand will lead me and your right hand hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will cover me and the light around me turn to night, darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day. Darkness and light to you are both alike. For you yourself created my inmost parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I will thank you because I am marvellously made. Your works are wonderful and I know it well. The Spirit of God is in all the world. And so today we continue reading from the prophet Jeremiah and we've reached chapter 22 and we begin at verse 20 and we go on into chapter 23. So this is the Lord speaking. Go up to Lebanon and cry out. Let your voice be heard in Bashan. Cry out from Abirim, for all your allies are crushed. I warned you when you felt secure, but you said, I will not listen. This has been your way from your youth. You have not obeyed me. The wind will drive all your shepherds away and your allies will go into exile. Then you'll be ashamed and disgraced because of all your wickedness. You who live in Lebanon, who are nestled in cedar buildings, how you will groan when pangs come upon you, pain like that of a woman in labour. As surely as I live, declares the Lord, even if you, Jehoiakim, son of Jehoiachin, son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, were a signet ring on my right hand, I would still pull you off. I will deliver you into the hands of those who want to kill you, those who f you fear, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon and the Babylonians. I will hurl you and the mother who gave you birth into another country where neither of you was born, and there you will both die. You will never come back to the land you long to return to. Is this man, Jehoiachin, a despised, broken pot, an object no one wants? Why will he and his children be hurled out, cast into a land they do not know? O oh, land, 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 hear the word of the Lord. This is what the Lord says. Record this man as if childless, a man who will not prosper in his lifetime, for none of his offspring will prosper. None will sit on the throne of David or rule any more in Judah. Woe to the shepherds who are destroying and scattering the sheep of my pasture, declares the Lord. Therefore this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says to the shepherds who tend my people. Because you have scattered my flock and driven them away, and have not bestowed care on them, I will bestow punishment on you for the evil you have done, declares the Lord. I myself will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the countries where I, have, where I have driven them, and will bring them back to their pasture, where they will be fruitful and increase in number. I will place shepherds over them who will tend them, and they will no longer be afraid or terrified, nor will any be missing, declares the Lord. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, a king who will reign wisely and do what is just and right in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved and Israel will live in safety. This is the name by which he will be called, the Lord, our righteous saviour. So then, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when people will no longer say, as surely as the Lord lives who brought the Israelites up out of Egypt, but they will say, as surely as the Lord lives who brought the descendants of Israel up out of the land of the north and out of all the countries where he had banished them, then they will live in their own land. 
so more words um, of challenge for the people, but also that amazing prophecy of one to come. So let me read a reflection, again written by Bishop Graham James. After so much unremitting condemnation, it comes as a relief that Jeremiah changes his tone. Although he puts no trust in Judah's kings and their heirs, he does point to a day when God will raise up a righteous branch from the line of David to restore justice and righteousness in a renewed nation. But there are years of pain to come first. Jeremiah anticipates both the exile of the people in Babylon and their return. He suggests that this return will be so wonderful that it will even displace the exodus from Egypt in the memory of God's people. These exiles will be the ones to build the nation again, not those who remain in Jerusalem living under whatever conditions the Babylonians impose. The experience of being dispossessed and subjugated in exile will be a school of learning and renewal. Those who suffer the most will learn the most, and from them true shepherds of God's people will be found. When we are burdened and sad, to whom do we go for support? Is it to the brash and self-confident who seem to sail through life? It's unlikely. We go to the person who has suffered themselves, who is attentive and not overpowering, who listens and loves. Churches rarely ask for the broken and suffering to shepherd them. It is usually the broken and the suffering they get, whoever they've asked for. They make the best shepherds of Christ's flock. Some good thoughts there about shepherding and about who we turn to when we're in need and what they've been through. And so we turn to prayer and we begin with the collect for this week. Gracious Father, you gave up your son out of love for the world. Lead us to ponder the mysteries of his passion, that we may know eternal peace through the shedding of our Saviour's blood. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And a prayer for Lent. God of our deepest selves, as we walk with Jesus in the wilderness, as we face our fears and doubts, as we leave behind all that has weighed us down, may we tread with lightened step through the 40 days of Lent, knowing that we are dust and to dust we shall return, but will come to Easter filled with joy, knowing that we are loved and meant for life with you forever. Amen. On all who are dispirited and dejected, on all who have lost hope or joy, on all who are unable to cope, on all who are weak and heavy burdened, on all who are fearful and anxious, on all who are lost or have strayed, on all who are powerless and helpless, Lord, have mercy. Holy Spirit, bringing order out of chaos. Holy Spirit, breathing life into the lifeless. Holy Spirit, making strong the weak. Holy Spirit, guiding all who venture. Holy Spirit, filling all things. Come renew the face of the earth. And we pray together as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The strength of God, guide us. The power of God, preserve us. The wisdom of God, instruct us. The Spirit of God be within us this day and evermore. So may God the Father bless us, may Christ the Son take care of us, and may the Holy Spirit enlighten us all the days of our lives. Amen. So thank you so much for joining me for prayer today, and I hope you have a good rest of your Wednesday, and we'll be back here for prayer tomorrow at 9.45. So until then, take care and God bless. Bye for now.